Up until now, we've only talked about monoatomic ions. That's a single atom that has either lost or gained electrons, and now it has a charge on it. Well, there's also polyatomic ions. And they're usually anions, but there are a couple uh, polyatomic cations. We'll get into that in another video. But right now, let's just kind of go over the idea of how these anions behave. So, as an example, let's take the phosphate ion. And you can look up in a book, it'll say phosphate is PO4 3 minus. Now, what does that, how, how, how does that all fit together? Well, you can think of it as it has a, a phosphorus atom, right, a single phosphorus atom, and attached to that are four oxygen atoms. So, oh, 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 and oh. And now, these guys are covalently bonded, not ionically. Now, we'll get into what covalent means, but for right now, we can think of that as they're locked together. They're not, this oxygen isn't going to come off, and other oxygens aren't going to go on. So, we're going to think of this as one unit. And if you want to right now, you could think of this as a single atom, almost. You could, but it is a single ion. It has, all together, this whole thing has a charge of minus three, or three minus. You'll see it, you'll see it both ways. But this, all together, has a charge of minus three. So, let's see what happens if we have a bunch of these guys and a cation together. Let's say the cation is sodium. Now, sodium, uh, as an ion, it likes to lose one electron, and so it usually has a charge of plus one. And you can tell that because it's in the first column in the periodic table, and they pretty much always do that. So we have a bunch of these and a bunch of these together. Well, this, I'm just going to use green here, and I'm going to put an A in it for anion. Just for right now, that's what I'm going to do. Now, that has, by itself, a charge of minus 3. So, it can attract one of these sodiums, right? So, the sodium ion comes up, and now, all together, this has a charge of only minus 2. Because minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2. Now, when another one of these sodiums floats along and then gets attracted to it, you hit plus, right? And now, all together, this has a charge of minus 1. Because it was minus 3 plus 1 plus 1, now it's only minus 1. So it still has a charge, right? And regardless of whether this is a polyatomic ion or a monoatomic ion, ions always like to have a charge of 0. Remember, that's the name of the game with these ionic compounds. Everybody wants to have zero. So, the minus one is not happy. It's going to, another one of these guys is going to come along, and it's going to be pulled in there by this guy. And we have Na plus, right? And now let's think about the total charge here. We have three minus, or minus three, plus one, plus one, plus one. Now, the total charge is zero. And so it's happy. It's going to stay like that. Other sodiums aren't going to come along. These sodiums don't want to leave. It's happy the way it is. So, now how would we write a formula for that? Because before we only had two different atoms to worry about. It was either like sodium and chlorine or something like that, or chloride. But now we have more, uh, we have more atoms to worry about. So, it it follows the same rule. The cation always gets written first, and then it's the anion. So if I want to write the cation first, well, that's sodium. I'm going to write sodium. And now it's the anion. But remember, this green right here stood for the entire, all of these atoms. Because they're one unit. They didn't change. These oxygens didn't leave. It's only one unit. So I'm going to write... PO4. And that's the anion right there. And we had three of these, right? One, two, three. So we have Na 
three PO4. And the naming is exactly the same. The cation name comes first, so it's sodium. And now the name of this guy, which was, if you look up in a book, it's going to say it's phosphate. And so, now that's a pretty easy example. Sodium phosphate, that makes, that makes sense, right? Because it has a charge of minus three, so it's going to pull three positive charges. But let's say we have a more complicated mixture. And I want to do this like this. I have my jar with water in it. And now I have a bunch of these sodium sodiums floating around. I'm just going to put plus right there. Okay, so that stands for one sodium ion, each one of those. And I also have a bunch of these anions floating around. And I'm going to represent all of these atoms, all five of these atoms in this circle, because that acts as one unit. So I'm going to put three minus in here for one or another. Okay? So let's see what happens. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I meant to do a more complicated <laughs> example. So instead of having sodium, let's have magnesium. And since that's in the second row, it likes to lose two electrons and have a charge of two plus. So each one of these is two plus. Sorry about that. Okay, here we go. So now what's going to happen? Well, one of these guys, the three minus, can attract one of these guys, the two plus, right? That's the 2 plus here. And now what's the total charge on that? Well, the total charge is 3 minus plus 2, so it's only minus 1. So since we still have a negative charge, we want to get down to 0. We always want to have 0 charge, so another one of these positives can come. It's 2 plus. But now we've overshot it, right? So now our total charge is, let's see, plus 4 minus 3, so now that's plus 1. So it's still charged, so it's going to attract one of these guys, right? Because that's a negative charge and a positive charge. So this guy could come around. I'll just draw that right there. And now what's our total charge? Well, we have minus 6 and plus 4. So that must be plus, or I'm sorry, minus. And so we're still charged, and we have other charges here. So what's going to happen? Well, we want to get down to zero, right? So that guy is going to come in here and make an ionic bond. And now what's our total charge? Okay, well we have minus three, and then plus, I mean minus six, and then plus two, four, six. Now our total charge is zero. And now this entire thing behaves as one unit. So how are we going to write that? How are we going to write a formula for that? Well, again, the cation always comes first. And the cation was the magnesium, right? The magnesium. And I could see that there are one, two, three of them. Okay? Magnesium three. And now, this this is where a lot of people make mistakes. They like to say, okay, well, PO4, since there's three of them, then, or there's two of them, then it's going to have two of these and eight of these. That's wrong. Because in chemistry, we like to, to read things as they are as a unit. So since this guy is one unit, we keep it written like this, PO4 as one unit so we can see, ah, okay, everything that's in there, there's the P, the O, the O, the O, the O, and here, still in here is the P, O, O, the O, O. So we write it like that, and then we put parentheses around here, and then put a 2 to show how many there are. And the name of that would be magnesium phosphate. We'll go more into this and do some more examples.